Welcome to a series that we call The End of Times, where we're going through the book of Revelation verse by verse to try our best to see what it is we can expect to happen in the end times. But more importantly, what it is we should be doing during the end times. Our actions are very important. It is the faith and the spirit that will lead to actions, and we need to know what the right and wrong things are, going, are, are because most Christians will be following the Antichrist and the way of the Chaldeans and the Babylonians. So it's important we understand this because tribulation literally means standing up in the face of adversity, declaring Jesus Christ as Lord when the rest of the world is doing the opposite. And the last time we talk, talked about them getting drunk on the wine of God's wrath, which causes them just to be foolish, confused, gluttonous, naked, fornicators, drunkards, to the point where they will vomit. And we are seeing that in the world today. Many of us, many of us, thousands of you have reached out to me in this same knowledge set that if you're in a town of 10,000 people, there's two or three of you that seem to be getting it. The rest seems to be drunk. And they are drunk. They're drunk on the wrath. They're drunk on the wine of God's wrath. And it's causing them just to be foolish. It's, it's almost like they're in a fog. And you're trying to shake them, saying, "Stand, st snap out of it. Don't you see what's happening? But they don't because they are drunk on God's wrath. So we're going to take a look. Where we are in Revelation is, is we've, we're following the wrath of God is being unleashed on the earth. And it's beginning with the declaration of three angels. And we went through the first two angels. One declared the... Uh, one declared the everlasting gospel being preached and judgment is coming. The other angel declared that Babylon has fallen and now we're at the third angel. Revelation 14, verse 9. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Now this is judgment, is what's taking place here. It's judgment. And I want to take a moment, you know, we're going to spend at least two episodes talking about these two verses, because there's a lot to unwrap here. But ultimately, I want to kind of break down what this third angel is saying. So we're going to look at it closer. If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So a lot of the, there's a conception that people think, well, I could just do whatever I want. I said some magic words when I was younger, so I'm going to get raptured up. God's going to put a big old crown of glory on my head, but I don't have to do anything. I just had to say some magic words when I was 14, but, you know, made a lot of episodes on this. If the Spirit indwells within, you will see the things of God clearly. If the Spirit indwells within you, you will want to be about your Father's business. If the Spirit indwells within you, you will care for the least of these. If you're not doing those three things, the Spirit is probably not dwelling within. And whatever you said when you were younger, it wasn't in the heart. You might have spoke it because your parents told you to, or they encouraged you to, or... But if it's not in the heart, God knows the heart of man. Period. But there's this conception that as long as you don't receive the mark, you're okay. That it's a defined thing. Either you receive the mark, you're condemned to hell. You don't, you're good. That is not the case because it says here clearly, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Well, what does that mean also? we got to go back to... Angel number two, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, the great city, because she has made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. If you're drunk and confused, if you're sitting there walking around scared about politics, scared about, you know, what's your neighbor doing, or scared about where you're going to get your toilet paper from, or you're, you're drunk. You're drunk on the wine of the wrath of God. You're drunk. You, you know, when people went out and started buying toilet paper, that was from God, by the way. When you're sitting there worried about your butt, that's not normal. That is not normal. He caused this nation of America to become drunk on the wine of his wrath. And what did they fear? They feared their butt, just like a drunk man will do. You know, I maybe had six rolls when all that started. Family of six. 
I wasn't worried at all. I knew where my toilet paper was coming. It comes from him. I wasn't worried at all, but most of the country, they were drunk. They were worried about their butts. That's what this is about. They're confused. They are literally drunk on the wrath of God, and we're seeing it in front of our eyes unfold. It's not that confusing. And what are drunken fornicators going to do? They're going to follow the Antichrist because he's given them everything they want to hear. Looks like a lamb, speaks like a dragon. They love it. That's exactly the type of man they want to follow. And as a result, whether they receive the mark or not, if they receive the mark, for sure, they're going to be tormented with fire and brimstone. If they don't receive the mark, but they're still drunk on the fornication of Babylon, they're also going to be tormented. You know, this is a big deal. People just act like, well, I can be confused or I can be in a fall. Like, they don't even know they are. Like, there, there's a 100% chance that if you're drunk on the wrath of God, you don't even know you're drunk on the wrath of God. But people like me and the thousands and thousands and thousands of others that have reached out, they see it. We, you know, you, when you see a drunk man, you know he's drunk. And typically he's going to say, I'm not drunk, is typically what he's going to say. And we're watching American Christians be drunk on the wine of the wrath of God. You know, and there's going to be a hard pill to swallow that I'm about to tell you. I'm about to tell you something that you're not going to like to hear. It's going to make you angry. I don't care. I didn't say it. God said it. Pick it up in 10. He himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. You'll be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and Jesus. It's a judgment. There's a consequence for your actions. You know, people, unfortunately, Europe and America have made Jesus into this feminine, sweet little Jesus who everybody's, nobody's afraid of him. He's sweet Jesus. Judge Jesus, this is not sweet. And now Jesus is all love, but there, he is also justice. He is the God of justice, and justice must be unveiled as the kingdom of heaven is re revealed on earth as it is in heaven. We can't let, God can't let that be corrupt like earth is. So there has to be a judgment, and this torment in the presence of the holy angels and Jesus Christ. It's a bad day. It's a real bad day. It's judgment day. It's the wrath of God being poured out. And if you don't understand this concept of the wine of the wrath of God, you know, watch the last episode, episode 91, I believe. It's not pretty. And I think we're watching most American Christians. They're already drunk. They're drunk right now as, as they're probably watching this. They're probably angry. Like, I'm not drunk. But if you're looking at the people around you wondering, why is it the people are showing up to church on Sunday, they throw 10 bucks in the plate, then they go home and watch porn. Or they go out and they get drunk. Or they go out and they cheat on their spouses. Or they, they're cussing. Or they're, you know, they're, they're worried about their butts, so they're panic buying toilet paper. Why are they doing that? It's because they're drunk. A drunk man is easy to see. Police are trained to spot drunk people. I've seen so many in my lifetime, I feel like to some degree I'm trained to spot drunk people. We all know what that looks like. It's not that confusing. When you're drunk on the wrath of God, I think it's real obvious. And there's thousands of people around the world watching their towns and their cities get drunk on the wrath of God. Love to hear your thoughts on all this. Put it in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel through Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests, so never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.